One Direction star Liam Payne dies after Balcony 4. R.I.P. Liam Payne. R.I.P. Liam Payne. Y'all know my favorite One Direction guy is obviously Harry Styles and probably second Malik or Malik, Zayn Malik, sorry. Um, I didn't really know what Liam Payne too well. Wasn't really familiar with his solo stuff. Um, didn't really follow much about him, you know, outside of One Direction. But I had noticed within the last few months, it did seem like he was spiraling. Not going to lie. Um, I don't know much about the kid, but every time I saw him on my feed, it wasn't good. The first thing I remember seeing was like accusations of him maybe doing some sexual assault things to some ladies and that. Um, I think there was a report or there might be something that I read where one of the victims allegedly was thinking of writing a book or is in the process of writing a book. There was that story, I think, of his ex-partner. I think it might be the one he had a kid with or maybe an, an ex-wife or something. I forgot which one it was. But one of those people that he dated in the past put out a restraining order on him. Um, the other members of the crew weren't really liking him too much, it seemed like. Um, there was those viral clips of him on the red carpet where he was talking to a journalist that he's clearly coked out of his mind. Um, and just other things as well. Where, whenever I saw him on my timeline, it wasn't good. So when I did see that he passed, I wasn't too surprised, I'm not going to lie. I'm not too sure if you guys had the same reaction, but... It didn't really catch me off guard. I wasn't too surprised because it did seem like he was spiraling super hard. But the circumstances of which he died is really tragic. Now there's been more information out there. They're allegedly saying that when he did fall from the balcony on the third floor, that he might have been unconscious or semi-conscious. But they, I think from the autopsy, they can't find any evidence that he kind of tried to break his fall. You know, nothing. So he must have been spiraling you know maybe he was in a k-hole maybe he took too much coke maybe he did too much mdma whatever he was doing heroin whatever and he just kind of fell out from where he was there was no loss in the room i think by that time his girlfriend at the time already left to go back home so he was basically alone um which is always the most tragic part about these stories when a very popular famous celebrity super rich guy um those the last moments are usually on your own and he was in this like from the hotel from what i saw again i'm not too familiar with argentina argentinian hospitality but the hotel looked like a shithole i'm not gonna lie the hotel looked like a fucking shithole and one of the you know most famous guys in the world from one of the most popular boy bands in history was staying in this hotel in argentina random one and he somehow ended up falling out of the back falling you know off the balcony and unfortunately passing away so a real tragic way to go out like super super tragic I can imagine for his family, it must be super awful, especially because the news was on social media so fast. The pictures of his body was on social media. Um, you know, people leaking information of like his last moments and what he said and what he was doing. Like a ton of stuff that you just want as a family to just keep private and deal with and grieve in your own way. But we all saw it on social media. Like I legitimately saw his body on fucking Twitter. People were sharing it straight after, Jeremy. You know I mean? Someone took a picture of him, like, you know, lying on the floor and stuff and taking pictures of the markings on his body and tattoos to clearly show that it was him. And she was like, Jesus Christ, man. Look at where we are in social media. Look at where we are in social media. Like, someone fell out of a window, a celebrity, and the first thing people are doing is taking pictures of it. Like, full body pictures, too. And the picture that I saw, too, the really disconcerting thing about it, I think I remember seeing it, he looked like he was asleep. He, lo he looked kind of peaceful, I'm not going to lie. He didn't look like he had any anguish on his face. That was a really like jarring thing about it. Like it kind of it kind of looked fake in a way, but it was obviously a real picture that was doing the rounds on social. Um, so R.I.P. to Liam Payne. Really sad way to go out, for sure. But again, uh, you know, like it's it's a miracle that this type of stuff doesn't happen more often. Given how famous he was, you know, you would be led to believe that maybe he was in this situation. Maybe he got to this state because of just the inability to cope with his dwindling fame you know he was never the most famous person in one direction anyway but as they split up and went on to do their own things he started to become more and more i'd say quote unquote irrelevant but not you know not to his family and friends but when it comes to the celebrity side of things people that weren't really looking for him in that way so he must have noticed that so to notice that happening to you in real time and to not be able to do anything really about it must be so difficult especially when you started off being one of the most famous people in the world and you have to also imagine how one direction were put together they never really earned the right to be famous you yeah? know they were kind of a manufactured boy band i forgot the show they were, they were on maybe it was x factor i forgot what show it was but the show that they put them together as a boy band they all they all basically were trying to make it individually but then um somebody on that show one of the judges had a you know brilliant idea to actually make them a boy band instead and it obviously worked out brilliantly for them and um 
when it worked out brilliantly for them, they were able to kind of go from being nobodies to being legitimate superstars. And that kind of fame is hard to sort of like step away from. I think for someone like Harry Styles, who's my favorite, I feel like Harry Styles is like, he's like, he has a maybe a healthy relationship with his level of fame. And he also seems like he's never chasing it. So maybe if, it, if, if for instance, Harry Styles dropped a dud of an album and all his fans left and stopped listening to him, I think he'd be perfectly okay with not being famous. But I think certain people, other people in the group, maybe even Zayn Malik's another example. I think Zayn Malik is a, is a good example. He probably looks like a type of person who probably would probably be okay if fame went away tomorrow. But I think other members of the group, probably not so much, you know? And Liam Payne was a good example of it. Like, once the fame started to dwindle, like, you could see, you know, it was really affecting him, which is understandable too, because that's all you've known. You've gotten a lot out of it. Um, you've grown accustomed to it. Um, but it didn't seem like he adjusted um, to his uh, decreasing fame over the years. And then, you know, maybe you can blame some of the sexual assault, harassment, fucking accusations, you know, at that inability to cope with that sort of level of fame kind of going away. Who fucking knows? But I'm sure that didn't help. And um, the internet kind of turned against him. I feel like in the last few months, there was that clip of him. I forgot, what, where did he go to? I think he might have went to that, the other kid in the in a group. I think it's Horin, 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 I forgot his name. And I think he went to go see him perform. And he was in the VIP box you know, being a bit cringy, being a bit embarrassing, um, you know, saying hi to the fans, dancing and basically being a bit of an attention seeker. But to me, I just saw, I just saw somebody that was just like, you know, it was like a cry for help, you know, looking for company, wanting people to kind of recognize him. And I think a, a girl actually that was in the hotel that um, he was staying in a couple of days before he passed, basically um, gave a statement or, you know, uh, said something to a journalist about how he was, like that in his last moments like he was walking around on purpose trying to make you know trying to be seen sitting in a hotel lobby on his laptop in clear view of people hoping to be seen always dropping the fact that he was in one direction every time you know um yeah it's me i'm that guy it's me i'm the guy liam like that type of stuff right so it's kind of funny but really really fucking tragic really 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 fucking tragic so R.I.P. to Liam Payne, honestly, R.I.P. to Liam Payne. Let's read the article. It says, Liam Payne, the former One Direction star, died age 31 in Argentina after falling for the third floor of a hotel in Buenos Aires, police say. In a statement, police said that they discovered Payne's body after an emergency crew responded to a call in the upscale neighborhood of Palermo on Wednesday. On Thursday, police in Buenos Aires said that the preliminary autopsy suggests that Liam Payne died from an external and internal bleeding injuries. Police suspected... So police inspected the area where pain fell and found items including phone and alcohol in the phone. Medication was found in his room. Payne had risen to uh, global fame as a much-loved boy band created on X Factor in 2010 alongside Harry Styles, Louis Thomason, Nao Horan and Zayn Malik. There's a location of the hotel. Um, according to the police in Buenos Aires, officers of the scene were initially reports of some reports of an aggressive man who had been under the effects of drugs and alcohol. When they arrived at the hotel, officials were told a loud sound had been heard in the interior courtyard. Soon after, they discovered the body there. A police um, investigation was then launched. Emergency Medical Services Director Alberto Crescento told local media that Payne had suffered serious injuries and an autopsy will be carried out. Mr. Crescenti declined to answer questions about the circumstances. The star's body has been transferred to a morgue in the city. Third floor, you know, it doesn't seem too high, really. But if you're unconscious and you fall right on your back, you just think, forget even that. Like, if you fall over in a kitchen, you bang your head on your fucking you know, on your counter the wrong way. God forbid it doesn't happen, touch wood, but you could probably RIP yourself in your kitchen if need be. So just imagine falling from the third floor. But the other sad thing as well, they showed pictures of his hotel room and God almighty, man, it looked exactly like the scene that you would see when Whitney, he died and the scene that you saw when Amy Winehouse passed away too. It's, it felt like the exact same thing, the exact same thing, just a complete mess. I think the TV had been punched Clearly, he punched it in a fit of rage. There was loads of foil everywhere. So I'm not sure if that was because he was smoking heroin or crack or something. A bunch of foil. There was a candle in the bathtub, which I'm assuming was probably for the foil, right? Probably didn't have a lighter, so he was using a candle to probably do what needs to be done with it, which is kind of wild, but also makes sense because I remember somebody actually telling me once before that behind the scenes, 
um, a bunch of people, celebrities especially, musicians especially, um, do heroin, which makes sense because, you know, there's a bunch of, you know, of our legends who unfortunately passed away or had very pretty bad heroin addiction. So maybe that was that. Um, I think there was also, I think a box of soap, a bar, like from a bar of soap, which I think people were suggesting was probably the place that he put stuff in. Allegedly, that was maybe... That's kind of like a thing what people do take the bar of soap and use the box as a place to kind of stash all your stuff in because no one's going to probably look at that or whatever so that was really the, the sad depressing part of his room you know seeing somebody who allegedly i keep seeing reports oh this guy was worth 50 million i'm not too sure i'm not sure if that's true the way he was moving the places he was staying at i'm not sure that looks like i'm not sure that's the type of person that had that much money maybe the money was running out the fame was obviously dwindling all his accusations coming up about him He's also not well liked, um, you know, especially after that Logan Paul interview. I still remember the, the reaction to that on social media was so, so bad. People kind of, I felt like turned on him when he went on that interview and kind of was speaking about how important he was and how much of a bigger deal he was compared to all these other bandmates and shit. And he kind of went on a big heel turn that kind of affected his public perception. But I don't know. I think looking at the hotel and how, you know, kind of um, ghetto and ratchet it looked and, you know, the places he was in and shit, it didn't seem like he was... Um, in the best uh, place when it comes to finances and shit that might have affected his you know you know how it ended for him but r.i.p lee and pain r.i.p lee and pain then also we've got this article here courtesy of the bbc it says lee and pain's dad greets fans as cheryl pays tribute um i was actually reminded about this because i forgot honestly i honestly had forgotten that lee and pain dated cheryl cheryl cole or they have a kid together and it reminded me of like you know how different things are like like the the double standards between men and women is pretty interesting, isn't it? Because I'm pretty sure when they got together, he was a teenager. He was a fucking teenager and she might have been like mid-20s. It's pretty wild that like this woman was like maybe 26. He might have been like 17, 18. And they were legitimately together to the point where they had a kid together. Pretty fucking crazy. Um, so here's her popping up again, trying to give us morality lessons, right? So Cheryl Cole versus on courtesy of Instagram. As I try to navigate this earth-shattering event, and work through my own grief at this in, um, indescribably painful time, I'd like to kindly remind everyone that we have lost a human being. Liam was not only a pop star and a celebrity, he was a son, a brother, an uncle, a dear friend, and a father to our seven-year-old son. Liam's 31, that kid's seven years old, you do the math. Um, or he died at 31, right? <laughs> you do the math. A son that now has to face the reality of never seeing his father again. What is troubling my spirit the most is that one day Bear will have to access the abhorrent reports and media exploitation we have seen in the past two days. It is heartbreaking. No, it is breaking my heart further that I cannot protect him from this in the future. I am begging you to consider what use some of these reports are serving other than to cause further harm to everyone left behind picking up the pieces before you leave comments or make videos ask yourself if you would like to your own child or family to read them please give liam the little dignity he has left in the wake of his death to rest in some peace at last thank you cheryl now on paper what she's saying is true but unfortunately, the reality of things doesn't work out that way. Um, Liam, unfortunately, towards the end of his career, the end of his time in the limelight, it seemed like he was moving a bit mad. Again, I don't know much about the kid um, or just what I saw on social media, but it looked like he was moving a bit mad. And it looked like he may have done, might not have done a few things to some ladies. Who knows? But just in terms of his lifestyle and shit, this seemed like the inevitable end because he went through rehab a couple of times, clearly got himself, you know, on a straight and narrow, sober and shit, but eventually ended up in this spot again. And, you know, unfortunately, these type of things never end well. So more likely than not, if he didn't get his life sorted out, this would have been the eventual end of it anyway. So that's why I say when I saw the news, I wasn't too surprised. And I'm sure some of you guys listening and watching probably weren't too surprised either when you heard the news. But I think, unfortunately, when it comes to these sort of situations, when people pass and everyone's talking about them, this is probably the perfect time to talk about everything, to put everything on the table, not to dismiss something, not to want to have those uncomfortable conversations because now is the time because they're in the public conversation. And one of the things that you want to talk about is obviously his relationship with Cheryl back in the day, which was pretty crazy, which you would maybe accuse Cheryl of grooming. 
maybe it's different when you're a celebrity and you're famous and you're not really your you know you're not really your age you're maybe a little bit more mature so it's a bit different it's men and women blah blah but if we, if people are out here kind of throwing accusations of grooming at guys all the time left and right i think this is one of the better examples of it right of somebody that was a a teenager still figuring out life dating a 26 27 year old like she has no place like you know being in a relationship with somebody that that young but she did it anyway didn't really give a fuck um and now you're wondering how your kid's gonna navigate the world like that's the partner you chose you chose to get shacked up with a dude who was way younger than you who had all these demons that he had went through what he went through this is kind of what it is you're not gonna be able to protect your kid from knowing or to from learning what their dad was like you know and what your relationship was like with them and whatever happened from that happened from that but that's what you have to take from it you can't control that narrative too much in that regard um should there be an aspect of kind of letting the dead you know re rest in peace yes probably but the world we live in at the moment <laughs> it's just not gonna happen people are gonna if you're a piece of shit people are gonna take pleasure in your death and they're gonna talk about all the grimy shit you did because they want to sully your name they don't want anyone to cele celebrate you in any positive light in the media and in the press which i can kind of understand too if they believe that you're a piece of shit if they if you harm them in any way i can understand the get back being ha ha you died i'm going to talk about all that shit you did you know i'm going to sully your name people are not going to remember you well they're not going to hold you in high esteem it kind of is what it is in that regard so that thing you can kind of understand um but you know you just got to feel the thing that i felt the most bad for was just the dad i'm not gonna lie every celebrity saying what they're saying is what, what what they're saying but when you saw the family you saw the dad walking through i think that actually this clip actually might play where i think the, the dad arrives at the hotel and all the kids that are waiting that are kind of paying of you know doing a visual you know tribute whatever to fucking um liam payne outside the hotel they start holding up their bags their rucksacks to, to cover the dad so the, the the press couldn't get clear pictures of him walking in i thought that was super touching and super kind of them to do so so when the dad came in he was like you know what this is real this isn't some joke thing this is actually a real human but Cheryl Cole can go jump off a cliff to be honest but let's play this clip on Friday evening Liam Payne's father Jeff Payne came to visit the hotel where Liam Payne died he also after his visit inside the hotel came outside to where fans have been gathering for days leaving their tributes, lighting candles, laying flowers, writing messages about Liam, and even singing One Direction songs. There was an emotional moment when he arrived at the hotel where fans created a barrier between yeah. them and some of the cameras that had gathered here at the hotel. That was, of course, after his family had asked for privacy at this time. The same thing happened when his father left the hotel. But at that moment, his father decided to go over to the tree behind me, read some of these messages, even go up to some of the fans who were also emotional and in tears to greet them and share in some of their collective grief over the loss of Liam. Earlier today, his father visited the morgue where Liam's body was transported, which was part of the formal identification process needed to repatriate him back home. Now, this grieving process certainly, of course, is only just beginning for those loved ones of Liam Payne. There's been more tributes pouring in today and there's certainly more expected over the coming days. Uh, as it's expected he'll return home to where his family is and be given a proper send-off absolutely tragic isn't it um big up z cheryl groomed him big up fashion roadman too while guanji cheryl wasn't she a judge i don't know i'm not sure if she was a judge on the year that they got put together but she was a judge on that show in general anyway but yeah madness man cheryl cole having a kid with Lee. i legitimately forgot about that completely because cheryl cole has actually been quite she hasn't been really... I don't know, maybe because I don't watch TV. Maybe she's been on TV, but I don't feel like I've seen Cheryl call around on, on like... She's not really been, you know, out and about. I think she's kind of been keeping herself to herself. That's why I probably... I completely forgot about Liam Payne having a kid with her. Completely, completely forgot about that. Because I also remember... Didn't Liam Payne also... Didn't he jack... Yeah, didn't... Wasn't he the guy that jacked the girl? I forgot who the guy was. Was it... um? What's that show? What's that show about the dude that... that the American dude that, that, that has a football team? wasn't he the guy that broke up that marriage or am i mistaken i think so i think he might have got that woman to leave the 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 dude that stars in that show i think so i think that might have been also the reason why he was in the media so he hasn't been in the media for good things lately do you know what i mean that's the only sad thing about it uh, big up young old vibes she was on her brian callan yeah exactly she was on her brian callan thing um so obviously that was really hard and then of course we've got some other messages here courtesy of the sister courtesy of sky news it says liam payne's sister shares heartbreaking tribute after the star's death let's read the sister's tribute here to her bro this is liam payne's sister i don't believe this is happening 
Many times I've poured my heart out publicly with pride about Liam, but never about life as his sister. Liam is my best friend. None, no one could ever make me laugh as much as him. Doing his impressions always made me had me creasing, and he loved seeing how much of a laugh he could get. He moved out when he was seventeen to chase his dreams. It's that. It's that. That is this that forced me to finally pass my driving test during the X Factor live show weeks because I couldn't stand the thought of not being able to get to him. I would regularly drive to tea with him after he finished work. I you just sit around. One month. Um, the hotel was right by the Wagamamas and I swear he had it morning, noon and night. I used to love picking him up from work when it all started, especially after concerts, speeding us away from venues or appearances. Liam plugging his phone to show me his new songs or albums. Liam loved One Direction. He loved his brothers and he talked about it so much. He would just play song after song that they had recorded but never used and we would sit and have a mini One Direction concert. Liam knew that he could call me any time, any day, and I would pick him up, and that I would always fetch him, and he needed just to come home. Um, our calls would often result in me laughing at his ideas and next adventures, talking through his plans and make working through his issues. But it would always end with "I love you, miss you, love you." Liam was born with music in his veins. It was clear from a very young age. He just had the quality that would make him a star. I could sit and listen to him sing all day, which is a good job because he never bloody stopped. I've never tired of the look he gave me um, with his new, when, he, when he was listening to his new songs. Listen loud, he would say, and just grin with pride of his work. I keep notes on my phone, things to tell Liam, so that if he was away working for a while, I'd know what needed to update him on. I suppose it's only right that I tell him now. Liam, my brain is struggling to catch up with what's happening and I don't understand where you've gone. Just want to drive to your house and walk into the music blasting and find you sat there writing a song. What I love most about you is your ability to make me laugh. I never chuckle as much as I do when I'm with you and anyone else. I'm always in awe of your talent. I could be, it could, it should be illegal to be so talented and just have the ability to be able to not only be good at things, but be bloody great at everything you attempt. I love your kindness and how proud I am to call you my brother and my best friend. You also make a great Sunday dinner too. I don't feel this world would, is was good enough or kind enough to you. And quite often, uh, and quite often over the years, the last few years, you've had to really try hard to overcome all that has been aimed at you. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for the incredible memories. Thank you for being the best brother and a friend I've ever had. We'll take care of Bear and you always know how incredible his dad was and how much you idolize him. I'm sorry I couldn't save you. I love you. Oh, how my heart misses you. Um, one last time, I need you to know I'm here if you need anything. I drive to the end of the universe to bring you back. Jesus Christ, man. That's heartbreaking, isn't it? Liam Payne's sister. Absolutely heartbreaking. And some pictures, of course. That she's showing that she only probably she had as well. Jesus Christos. So yeah, that's when you see it's real. You know what I mean? That's when you see it's real. When people talk about somebody online as just like a figment, you know, it's one thing. But when the family steps out, it's one thing. But you also get the tone. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. You also get the tone from, from Cheryl Cole's statement, the sister. You just get the feeling like even the, the his closest friends knew he was, you know, going down a dark path, unfortunately. And unfortunately, these type of situations, when people are being so self-destructive, um, you know, there is nothing you can do to stop it. You kind of have to let it play out and then just be there, hopefully, to pick up the pieces. Unfortunately, this situation, there was no picking up the pieces and it was fatal. So RIP to Liam Payne. And then the last thing I was going to say was a Zayn Malik um, statement because this this kind of touched me because of the situation I went through with my friend Joshua, unfortunately, passing away um, last year. RIP to Josh and, you know, not being able to kind of grieve that in a correct way, unfortunately for myself, because of our, the state our relationship was at the time of his passing. So this statement, courtesy of Zayn, I think kind of echoes some of the feelings that I had. So this is Zayn Malik posting his statement on Instagram. He says, Liam, I found myself talking out loud to you, hoping you can hear me. I can't help but think selfishly that there were so many conversations for us to have in our lives. I never have to... I never got to thank you for supporting me through some of the most difficult times in my life. When I was missing home at 17 years old, you would always be there with a positive outlook and reassuring smile. Let me know you were you were, you were my friend and that I was loved. And even, hold on, let me just refresh that because I can't see the other side of it. 
Then one second here. And even though you were younger than me, you were always more sensible than me. You were headstrong, opinionated, and gave no fucks about telling people when they were wrong. Even though we butted heads because of this a few times, I always secretly respected you for it. When it came to the music, Liam, you were one of the most qualified in every sense. I knew nothing in comparison. I was a novice child with no experience, and you were already a professional. I was always happy to know, no matter what happened on stage, we could always rely on you to know which way to steer the ship next i lost a brother when you left us and i can't explain to you what i'd give to just to give you a hug one last time and say goodbye to you properly and tell you that i love you and respected you dearly i will cherish all the memories i have of you in my heart forever there is no words that to justify or explain how i feel right now other than beyond devastated i hope that wherever you are right now you are good and at peace and you know how loved you are love you bro which is always a tough part whenever you are you know whenever somebody passes that you weren't really on good terms with it's always really difficult it must be kind of hard to kind of process and to figure out you know what the right words to say are but one thing that you do realize is that you probably should have kind of made amends when they were around you know and probably put especially if it wasn't that deep if it was never that deep and the beef was never really you know something to really trouble yourself over you probably should have made that effort to kind of fix it and I think sometimes, even though this can be brutal and it can feel awful, I'm sure Zane does probably feel quite bad about the whole situation. Um, it's also a really good way to learn not to repeat the same mistakes and to make sure that if you are going through a tough patch with a friend, just to try and mend stuff as much as possible, because you know the you know you're aware that this person is going to be around forever and there's no guarantees of tomorrow. So if you're, if you're with them now and you can see them now and you can quickly text them and call them and mend things and make things okay, make sure you do because that's one thing that I sit in here can say that I generally regret when it comes to Joshua. You know, I should have kind of made an effort to sort of say something because I'm sure like, you know, we were friends since we were like fucking 18. Do you know what I mean? That, that, was, that was one of my first sort of like scene friends that I met and um, we were always cool for a long time and then just, some, I don't know what happened, but something happened where it kind of felt like we fell out and weren't talking and weren't really on good terms. But then I always just thought, okay, Okay, we're gonna mend it anyway because we'll bump into each other at one point and it'll be cool but it never happened and of course as soon as i kind of you know the real tragic part about joshua sweeney's passing r.i.p to him was that i'm pretty sure when i got the text that he was ill um i think the week after he passed or the week you know the like maybe even five days after i got the text that just was ill he, he passed away straight away and i'm assuming most likely because i've heard it after the fact now a lot of my friends telling me now that um he hadn't told anybody anyway so th the way i found out is a way that everybody found out he went to keep that private he didn't want to you know everybody to be aware of his condition and shit which i completely respect but it just would have been kind of you know it would have been nice to have kind of mended things obviously in that respect but i think that kind of harsh lesson is good for myself and others to learn so that you don't make that mistake again so that next time you know you don't miss a funeral you don't fucking you know not mend things with friends because you never are guaranteed that you're going to see them ever again so R.I.P. to Liam Payne, R.I.P. to Joshua Sweeney, R.I.P. to all, the, all of those we've lost um, this past year. It feels like, you know, it's been nonstop fucking losses, actually, this past year. And if you do, you know, have somebody in your life that you're probably not on good terms with, I recommend trying to mend that relationship as soon as possible and trying to get back on good terms, especially if there's no real static. If there's no real beef, no real static, no blood has been spilt. You should be trying to make amends. And even if there is blood being spilled, life is too short. Try and make amends as much as possible and continue going on that way. That's my advice. But again, what do I know? I know absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing.